you write these characters and you have an idea in your head of who this, who this character is. And then when you start seeing actors bringing something to that character, it starts to open up your eyes and thinking, actually, I wasn't expecting it to be that character, but that really works. Everyone was just like in awe of the principal talent and the performances that Tom Keegan got out of them. When you bring together a team of people who are really committed to the story and the characterization, the actors feel it, and we're really fortunate to find fantastic people to fit those roles. Have the assets set in place. We want the option to go mobile if we have to. My favorite character is Sinclair, who's played by David Harewood. When I watched the first read-through, I instantly knew, like, this is going to be a great story. The moment he kind of opened his mouth and started reading kind of Sinclair's lines, you go, yeah, that's him. Damn it, you're too important to this operation. Nah, you're too important to me. I almost call him the hero of the piece. He loves Vector. He's a soldier. He's been fighting for Vector since he was a boy. On one hand, he's caring for you. On the other hand, he has this kind of almost brutal motivations where he said, the only way we can ever be safe is by eradicating our enemy. It makes you want to fight for him. And you start to see that he may not be the good guy that you think he is. He has seen the worst of his, his enemy. And now that they are here on our planet, with just a wall between us, he feels almost kind of uh, violated. Uh, and that's something that initially you can, you can kind of relate to. Uh, but then you meet these other characters and they kind of hold up a mirror uh, to what it is that you're doing. Uh, and of course the key character in that is, is, is Echo. She's sort of an outsider. Her mother is a Helgas and her father was Vectin, so she is a half-breed. Because of the, the background she has, uh, the family she comes from, you can see that she's also going through uh, a change in, in how she views the world. She's not caught up with allegiances. That doesn't really matter with her. She does crave companionship, but she's never really had it, so she's completely comfortable standing on her own and, and standing up for what she believes in, even if that means she's doing so by herself. She again represents the crossover that we're trying to do. So Vecton's good, Helgast bad, there's a middle ground. Both sides help to destroy this planet. We can now let the same thing happen to Vector. To add to that mix, to really kind of stir, stir the pot, we have kind of this crazy element of Tyran who is completely out of control and who's a person who just seizes the moment. He's a hell-bent on revenge. He wants to crush skulls. He wants to look in the souls of people's eyes as they die. And that makes him feel alive. When Crispian walked in and he, he did his piece, we were kind of going, I want to get out of here because he's, he's genuinely, he's crazy. I, this, this, he's just way too scary. You've got to get some pain behind it, behind this intense anger. When you look at Tyrion, you're not just, oh my God, kill him, he's a really terrible guy. No, that you really understand these people's pain. You can understand kind of these people's motivations, but the only thing you have to figure out is what is the best way to actually deal with that problem of protecting your home. Video games in the past haven't always had that kind of depth and that richness for an actor. And so it's been really a joy to kind of, you know, bring this whole team together and really explore this story. It may deviate from kind of the, the mental image that you had, but at the same time, it's, it's far more interesting to see it portrayed in that light. These new consoles, the new game engines, the facial capture allow the story to be told so much more through the eyes of the characters and the voices and the performances. It's, it's a tremendous new opportunity. PlayStation.